Hey, my name is Ariana with MCAT Mastery, and today I want to talk about mindfulness and the MCAT. So I'm going to give you three tips for approaching the MCAT in a mindful way that will help you be successful. But first, why is mindfulness important on the MCAT? Mindfulness is important because you need to be able to kind of think clearly throughout your MCAT journey and on the actual MCAT. It's so easy to get caught up in the anxiety of the test, of how long it is, of hearing horror stories of people who have taken it three or four times and still have not been successful. And so by being mindful and focusing on the present and on the now, which is what mindfulness is about, you're able to put aside some of those anxious thoughts about the future and about your tests and how you're going to do and where you're going to apply and focus on right now and how you can be successful on the MCAT to become the doctor that you want to be. And a little side note, a lot of people get meditation and mindfulness confused or think they're interchangeable. Meditation is where you're quieting your brain and kind of putting it in a resting state. Whereas mindfulness is just focusing on the here and now. So meditation is a form of mindfulness, but it's not the only way to be mindful. So if you've heard a lot about meditation and you're interested in learning more, but you're kind of don't want to go that far yet, or you're not sure you're ready for that, these little tips are a great way to start and get your foot in the door. And you might realize how helpful it is and that you're interested even more in learning about meditation and other mindfulness techniques. So let's go with our three tips. The first tip I have is called the 478 breathing technique by Dr. Andrew Wheel. And you can see the link below if you want more information on where this comes from. But basically this technique is where you spend four seconds breathing in, seven seconds holding your breath or sitting with your breath and eight seconds releasing. And I love this because it only is 19 seconds total. It's not very long. And it's a great way to reorient yourself if you're in the middle of a passage or a question and you're not sure what's going on. If you do it three times, it takes up not very much time, maybe a minute total, less than a minute, but you're able to think clearly. And I also like to use this on cards between each passage because even though you're using those minutes and you're not reading, it really resets your brain so that you're not bringing information from your old passage into your new passage and you get so much clarity on the next passage because you're focused and you're zoned in. So I love the 478 technique just in general when you're studying, whenever you're overwhelmed or need a break and just want to refocus, but especially if you're in cars and want to kind of break up each passage and help you start fresh or if you find yourself falling asleep in cars, getting bored with cars, if you realize that it's hard to stay focused between passages, the 478 technique is a great way to combat that. My next tip is going to be about getting outside or getting up and moving around. It's very easy, again, when you're anxious, you want to stay and work on something and you miss this problem and you have to understand right now exactly why you missed it. And then you spend three or four hours focused on this one problem and you get frustrated because you can't understand it. And that happens so often because, you know, you're investing all this time and you have to understand it. But your brain needs a break and whenever you're taking a break you're actually letting it rest and you're kind of letting things synthesize and marinate in your head so that in a few hours or a few minutes when you come back your brain's had time to process through it so this tip is basically whenever you feel like you're getting frustrated or you don't want to get up you need to get up walk around do some jumping jacks if you can go outside go outside and breathe a little bit of fresh air Obviously, a time this doesn't hold true is if you're doing your full-length practice exam in testing conditions. You can't just get up in the middle of the test, so don't, you know, get up in the middle of the test and do this if you're overwhelmed. But you can practice on your breaks getting up and moving around a little bit. Don't just on the actual MCAT or on your practice ones. Don't just take your break and walk out of the testing center where you were sitting into the lobby and just sit down again. At least get up, you know, move a little, go to the bathroom, just kind of move your muscles so your brain can understand, you know, we have a break, take some time, get some clarity. And when you're talking about clarity, another great thing to help you have a clear vision of the future is my third tip called visualization. And visualization is where you will just sit there and visualize a certain scenario in your mind. And it's really teaching your brain to think of this scenario as what's going to happen or how it should happen. And so it's not that, oh, maybe it will, or I hope it does. Your brain thinks this is how it's supposed to be. 
And visualization can be used on both a macro scale and a micro scale. On a macro scale, you can spend time each day, and I recommend spending you know two or three, maybe even five minutes a day on visualization. And visualization is a great thing to lead into meditation. Um, but spend time on visualization, visualizing yourself, being a physician, what kind of doctor you want to be, interacting with patients, you know, having your office, all of those, wearing a white coat and a stethoscope. On the big picture scale, that helps your brain recognize the end goal. This is what I want to be. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. Not what I want to do, but what I'm going to do. And on a more micro scale, visualize yourself, especially as you get closer to the test date, visualize yourself actually going through the test, getting on chem and phys, opening that test, reading the first paragraph, getting stuck on a problem and visualize yourself breathing and using that 478 technique to kind of calm your mind and go through it and think through it and then being able to answer the question. And if you do that before your MCAT for several days, maybe even a week or two before it, it really helps when you get on test day to calm anxiety because even if you get stuck on a question, your brain then recognizes, I'm stuck, so what do I do? I take the time to do a little bit of breathing, to go ahead and reanalyze the question, to come back to it if I need to, and it helps eliminate anxiety that would be there otherwise because the unknown situation is no longer unknown. Your brain recognizes it. So these are my three tips for kind of getting started on mindfulness with the MCAT. If you'd like more information or want kind of a more personalized mindfulness plan or just would like to talk to somebody who has done it before, click on the link below. I am happy to help you and you can go on that link and set up a time to talk with me. Also sign up for our MCAT Mastery emails because you will get a lot of good mindfulness tips and information on stress and anxiety medicine. Half the battle is being able to contact this or can like be able to stop the stress and anxiety from the MCAT. So make sure that you're able to do that by focusing on mindfulness.